Hey there, Nick Jantak is here. In this video, we're gonna go over using nested blueprints with Flask. This is a really handy feature to attach common behavior to a group of blueprints. For example, you might have something like an admin parent blueprint, and then you can have a whole bunch of different children of that parent. For example, whatever your app does, right? You might have posts, to-dos, users, everything like that. And it would be really nice to have your authentication code handled in one spot. So on your admin parent blueprint, you can attach your decorator for making sure a user is logged in as an admin. And then you don't need to worry about applying that to every single child blueprint. And you can use Flask's before request feature for that. We're actually gonna see that in this example over here. You know, another useful reason for using nested blueprints would just to be for categorizing your code at the file system level and also creating, you know, something that matches your URL hierarchy. For example, you might have an about section of your page and you might have an about us page and you might also have like about policies terms or, you know, privacy policies, things like that. So it could be possible to have something like an about parent blueprint and then the us page and your different policy pages, those could all be children of your about parent one. And it's kind of nice. Yeah. So in this example, we're actually going to go over another use case of maybe you have a versioned API. For example, you have an API v1 that could be a parent blueprint. And then all of your different endpoints for to do's, you know, blog posts, users, etc. Those can all be children of v1. And then you can also, if you wanted to, you can have an API v2 parent blueprint. And that can have its own set of resources with different, you know, versions like, you know, however you want to set up your code. But that's what we're going to go over in this video here. And this is going to be based off this open source example, Dockerize Flask app. You don't need to know Docker to make all this work. If you just want to watch the video, that's totally cool. I'm going to link in the description to a blog post that's going to have all the new code that we're going to be adding to this project here, just uh, so you can copy paste that and take a look at it. You know, don't feel like you need to pause the video to take screenshots or, you know, write things down into a file. So with that said, you know, this application is up and running here. Well, yeah, it is up and running here. Ran some tests. Cool. So let's uh, check it out here. This is the homepage. This is straight out of the box, what you would get from just cloning down this repo here. Uh, the API nested blueprint stuff, we are going to be adding to this project here uh, in this video. I've already actually added it. So let's go over some of that code. And that is going to start in the app.py file here where we have an all familiar create app function, right? This is the application factory function. So we're going to go over, you know, a multi-file example of dealing this, uh, dealing with nested blueprints. We're going to, you know, avoid some circular dependency issues or maybe some other issues that you got, you know, potentially if you read the docs or whatever. But um, the main takeaway here is we are registering our API v1 parent blueprint. And it looks like, you know, any other blueprint, right? It's on app, register blueprint, and then boom. And if we uh, take a look at that, that is just something I imported up over here. So let's go and take a look here at this over here, which is uh, in the app folder. In API, it is in the init. Uh, that pi file here, or actually, nope, sorry, it's in the API v1 folder over here. Uh, there we go. So this is the blueprint that was just being imported in app.py. And uh, this looks pretty normal so far, nothing too crazy. Like this is pretty uh, interesting line, but you know, let's get there when we get there. And, uh, but we are just creating a regular API v1 blueprint. It's got a URL prefix of API v1 because uh, let's actually see this thing work for a second here. Uh, I just have a curl command copy to my clipboard here. So I'll run that and we just get a response here. And we can see we're going to localhost uh, port 8000 slash API slash v1 slash to do's. And, and that API v1 is due to this URL prefix over here. And all of our children blueprints like to do's in this case, they're going to get this URL prefix applied pretty nice. And uh, yeah, I can also call this with a bad token here, like instead of the APC one, two, three, I'll just put in some numbers there, whatever. And we can see we get an invalid token here. And if I uh, get the headers here of curl, we can see we actually get an unauthorized there, but for the legit one with the real, uh, well, actually no, it's this one. That's good. Isn't it? Yep. Then if I go and put in headers here, we'll see, we'll get a 200. Yep. Cool. And I'll rerun it again, just in case. There we go. Nice. Okay. So blueprint being registered, uh, totally normal here. And uh, the authentication here, you know, it's not meant to be production ready and we'll get to this in a second here, but uh, yeah, you can see here is really an important takeaway is, you know, we read, we registered that blueprint up before. Now we're using a feature of Flask called before request. And then we're just using our authentication decorator that normally would be something like Flask login or uh, whatever authentication library that you choose to have here. But what's really nice about this for before request is that you know, before the request, it is going to apply whatever decorators or code that we want here. And this is going to apply to all of the children blueprints because 
uh, as you're going to see here in a bit, the to dos is going to be a child of API v1. So this is really nice to get that common behavior applied to all the different blueprints, right? You don't need to duplicate uh, this decorator here in every single one, which is, you know, potentially uh, error prone. You know, you can maybe make a mistake and forget that. And that's not a really good thing if you're dealing with uh, authentication. So now let's take a look here at the to dos here. And by the way, before we even jump to to dos, let's go back to that app.py file that we we're looking at before. Notice here that. Uh, to do's is not even mentioned here, right? So in the create app function here, we are just registering the parent. Cool. Okay. So to do's, by the way, is nested over here on the sidebar. It has its own views.py file here. And uh, this should look pretty familiar too if you've worked at Flask before. There's nothing uh, specific to nested blueprints in this file. So we're just registering a new blueprint to do's here. It's got its own URL prefix of to do's. And then all it has is uh, an index function here. So, you know, when you go to API, if you want to do's here, it's going to give us a list of to do's. And of course, you know, this is just uh, kind of throwaway code for the example because really we're demonstrating nested blueprints, not how to build an API. So there's, you know, it's not database backed here. I just put a little structure here, you know, item ID completed. Although if you've watched videos in the past, you know, I love doing things like completed at, and I'll turn this into a timestamp instead. Uh, this way you kind of double dip right on one column. You get to know if it's been completed and you get to know exactly when. And then, you know, when it's not completed, it would be none. So our nil or null on the database there. So cool. Uh, anyways, going back to over here to where we were just looking at, uh, notice that instead of registering the blueprint on the Flask application, in this case, like current app, since we're in here, it's actually being registered on this blueprint here. So this is the really important takeaway where you are registering a child blueprint onto a parent. And, you know, there's nothing stopping you from doing, you know, whatever over here, right? Like posts or uh, users or anything like that. So all of your children would be over here. And I kind of like this, right? Kind of keeps things pretty clean. Your app, that pie file and the create app function doesn't really need to worry about all the different children of a parent. You know, all the child stuff can happen here in one spot. So that's basically uh, it here. Again, you know, this auth token, it's a little bit silly, right? But uh, it gets a job done for being able to test our crawl commands here with uh, being able to put in like a real legitimate like authorization bearer token, right? Um, yeah, all it really does here, just check to see if the token matches to a hard coded value here. Uh, realistically, in a more production ready app, you would have a current user and then the current user would maybe have like an API token that's encrypted in your database. And then you can just do a check here on the hash of that to see, you know, if these things match. And if they don't, then you can report invalid token. You know, uh, you know the, the importance of this video is not this function here. But the nice takeaway though is that you just have this one decorator over here Boom, applied in one spot, replace this with Flask login or whatever you want later, you know, JWT tokens, I don't know, well, whatever you want. And uh, yeah, let's go over the test suite too, by the way, because there is one of those. So if I run run test here, it is going to pass and it is going to give us some warnings. I uh, can't really do much about Flask debug toolbar at the moment, but it'll get updated at some point and then these will go away. But yeah, everything is passing here. And uh, what's really nice though about this test over here is that uh, it demonstrates how you can use Flask's URL for to access your child blueprints. So uh, the takeaway is not too difficult here. You just put in the parent blueprint, API v1 in our case, and then we have the child, which is to do's, and then your view function. So just to rewind here, we have this uh, app uh, API init file here. You know, this is where we are registering API v1 as our blueprint here, and we can also see it down here. And then we have to do's in our views file here, you know, to do blueprints over here, to do's, and then index. So we have API v1 dot to do's dot index. So that's how all that lines up. And uh, yeah, I don't know. I just wrote a couple of different tests here because, you know, kind of nice to have some tests here, basic ones. So we can have, you know, uh, doing our test without any authentication at all. Like let's say you didn't even put in a bearer token at all, or you put invalid auth here. You can see, nope, I put in there. And then also the valid auth where ABC123, all this is good to go. We can see our URL for is just hitting these endpoints that we want. You know, if this weren't an API app that you were building, you know, these could be links in your Jinja templates or, you know, whatever you want for your nested blueprints or children of the nested blueprints. Nice. And then, yeah, we have different status codes here, right? 401 in both cases with the bad, bad token and then 200 in the okay one. Uh, this video is not specific on testing, but yeah, that is honestly it. I mean, there's a couple other empty files here, but there's you know, nothing in there. And let me just make 100% sure here. So I did commit this. I'm not going to push it anywhere, but it will be linked on uh, a blog post version of this one. But we can see, yeah, we just added this new init file. We went over here. Yep, that's all good. Then in the views file, we went over all this stuff already too. And then, yeah, in the app.py file, we imported that and then registered it down there. And then the test function down here. That's it. Not too bad. And uh, that is Flask 
nested blueprints in a nutshell. So let me know in the video or let me know in the comments below if you have any questions or, you know, when was the last time you used Flask's nested blueprints? So that said, if you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up because it really does help a lot. Thanks a lot for watching and I will see you in the next video.